So Deion Sanders has gotten the number one recruit in the nation to Jackson State University. And I just gotta say right now, it's gonna rhyme, but I think y'all might like this. Protect Prime at all times, all right? Um, protect them, man, protect Prime at all times. Um, because it's crazy, man. Uh, this is the first time this has ever happened in the world. And um, this is big, man. This is big for the culture. This is big for black people, man. This is big for the world. And I know a lot of college recruits are mad. <laughs> I know they pissed off. I know these colleges that uh, reached out to Travis Hunter. I know they're looking at it like, boy, why the heck do you want to go to Jackson State University? And I'm gonna tell you something, man. That boy has done something that the world didn't see coming. And I even seen the topic being discussed on I Am Athlete when Channing Crowder was like, "There is no top. There is no top recruit that's gonna com that's, that's gonna go outside of a Power Five school and go to J and go to a HBCU and get and give their talents. Why would you do that? You know, what's the point in doing that? And I'm gonna tell you something, man. If that boy go to that school and ball out. He gonna already have a statue waiting for him on his rookie year or his sophomore year in pro. What he has done as what he has done right now as a young black male was shift the culture in a way of saying like, look, you don't have to um, you don't have to feel pressured to and, and go to these power schools just because that's just the thing to do. You know, the only thing they're gonna really run in your face is saying that, hey, they don't. That school doesn't have the financial backing. That school doesn't have the resources like we do. But Deion Sanders does. All right, Deion Sanders is prime time. Deion Sanders is that guy. Arguably, not even arguably, um, right next to Tom Brady, the best football player of all time. It's either him or Tom Brady. There is no in between. Either prime time or Tom Brady. Other than that, let's not even play these games, all right? Let's not even go there. That boy, that boy put on. He really did. And I really thank him for that. And we thank him for that. Uh, because now it's opening up the, the gates and it's opening up the doors for people to look at these black colleges and these black universities and saying, hey, man, you know, I don't, I don't, I, you know, I, you know, I want to go where I'm comfortable at. And let's be real, a lot of these players aren't comfortable where they go. You know, they go to these schools like Ohio State, Florida State, University of Florida, Texas, and all that stuff. And I'm not saying they're bad schools. I'm not saying that they're bad programs. They're not. But often, um, people don't realize is that these black players, they go to predominantly white schools and they don't really understand what they go through mentally. They don't know what they go through physically. They don't understand what they're dealing with and just being around their own that's just enough said and i think that most people in the world can kind of identify what it's like to be around your own i think they can it's not me putting out any type of um any type of detriment out there i'm not trying to stir the fence i'm not trying to get everybody's blood boiling but let's just be grown here all right uh sometimes and a lot of times and often you thrive better when you're around people who you identify with and going to an HBCU and setting it off, hey, that's just what it is, man. He went to where he was comfortable at, um, where he was most comfortable. And I rock with it, man. It's changing the narrative. It's, it's making other people wake up and smell the coffee. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, man, <laughs> let's talk about it. Basketball and football, over 80% of these players are black. They are. That's just what it is. So, um, hey man, it's just switching the gears right now, man. And if you're mad about it, if you got a problem with it, then you're the person that needs to be reevaluated. People gotta raise their eyebrow at you. Because to hate on someone who's a top recruit that chose to go to a what you call a small, mediocre school, that says a lot about you. I mean, that really does. So, um, salute to Travis Hunter, man. 
Like I said, I, I feel like he's going to ball out. He's going to make everybody around him better. He's going to go into that program as a, a automatic leader, off real. And we know he's going to go pro. He's going to go pro. The boy's talent is impeccable. All right, it's off the chart. Uh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it, and I love it again. Okay. Now we got to watch out for Deion Sanders and. And you know, for the future, for future references, we got to look at these HBCUs and be like, okay, we know they're gonna have something up their sleeves as far as trying to attack these programs, attack these HBCUs. The only thing Deion Sanders is missing now is a is a quarterback. If he can get a top ranked quarterback, top nationwide quarterback, that's a high recruit, top five, top three, and don't let it be number one, it's over. If he can get a, get a Lamar Jackson or a Colin Murray as a college student coming out of high school, then they're going to have some problems. So the question is this, how far are they going to let these HBCUs and Deion Sanders do, do their thing until they start quote unquote hating? How far are they going to go? Because I can assure you right now they're having conversations right now and we don't really know what they got up their sleeve, but we can only predict on what it could be. We can smell the hate in the air. We can feel the tension right now. But um, hey, man, I'm not trying to stir up anything, but much love to Travis, much love to Dion, much love to everybody around him. This right here was a W, a dub, a Jameis Winston dub, and I'll take it. Off rip.